<laughs> Tripping me up again with the streaming this thing. Uh, hi guys, it's it's me, your boy Ryan Swag here. I'm a little under the weather, so I got a little raspy voice going on. Uh, maybe it sounds a bit more charming. Get that that rugged man voice, right? And uh, I kind of like the screen here, the little border thing I got going on. So I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm using it today. I used it last time. I'm thinking with uh, this particular stream, uh, when I upload it to YouTube, I'm gonna put some uh, some cool stuff over there, you know, like little examples and stuff like that, because I don't have uh, complete mastery over this streaming nonsense. Aw oh, dang, Oz is digging, digging the manly voice, oh boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, this stream is gonna be on how to determine if a Pokemon's good or not. And, uh, rather than just being like, yeah, use Game Press and check out Pokebattler and do the Pokebattler and I'll tell you what's good, I'm gonna, like, do a little, you know, a, a bottom-up sort of, uh, perspective here, you know, like, how you can find out from looking at the game itself, the app, you know, like, what, what if you're, you know, stuck somewhere without internet? And, uh, you could still play Pokemon Go, though, for some reason, and you gotta know what the good Pokemon are, you know, or when Gen 3 comes out, the simulators and Game Press, uh, won't be updated right away. You know, I've got an action plan all set up to help, uh, Game Press get up to snuff when Gen 3 launches, but there is gonna be that, like, you know, that two-day, that one-week period of time where you're like, well, Game Press doesn't tell me what's good, and, uh... And, uh, Pokebattler is not updated, and, um, well, this one guy on the internet said this thing's good, but I don't know how good it is. Uh, how do I know if it's good or not, you know? So, give you the, the tools, you know, to figure out what's good without the, uh, all the tools we currently have. And then I'll also, you know, go into how to use those tools as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, overall, personally, like, for me, when it comes to me deciding what's good... As far as like an attacker or defender goes, um, that <laughs> one in doubt just Weedle spam. Right now, that's the old meta. Um, a little aside here. Uh, oh, sorry, gotta catch myself here. What's good? <laughs> All right. So starting out, you look at your Pokemon. You know, you flip open your phone, and uh, and you see that like some Pokemon got higher CP, and it's like. Whenever people are like, oh, why is Vaporeon better than this guy? Vaporeon's got lower CP, or... You know, whenever people use, like, CP as a, a measure for performance, you know, I always got to inform them where it's like, you know, CP suggests strength, but it doesn't always mean it, right? Oh, well, what do you mean by that, Ryan Swag, you know? Um, well, a lot of us know, maybe you don't know, uh, people watching the recording of the stream might not know, uh, that the CP formula is based on a combination of stats, uh, where it favors the attack stat, but then, you know, the defense stat also has some weight, and then it undervalues the, uh, the hit point stat, right? And, uh, so, you know, Pokemon with big attack stats, they're gonna have the bigger CP. So you think that means they're gonna be better on attack, but there's another factor that comes in that actually has, a, maybe not more weight than the stats themselves, but some heavy weight. Ooh, man. And that is their move sets, you know? And you're looking at the move sets and like let's say you see like uh oh man, I don't have base powers memorized, but it's like what well, water gun's like 5, you know? You see water gun it's like 5. And you see bubble and I think bubble's 15 between 15 and 20 now. So you see water gun and you see bubble. And you got your two pokemon and like let's say you've got your higher attack stat Pokemon, it's got bubble, and you're like, well, this this Pokemon has the bigger power move, and it's got the bigger CP, so it's got to be the better attacker, I mean, one would assume, uh, but that's not the case, because fortunately in Pokemon Go, different base powers don't tell you what the DPS is of the fast moves, uh, and that also ties in with the charge moves is too, like, the big charge move isn't always the best charge move. And a lot of websites still get the charge moves wrong as far as what their DPS is because it, it's the DPS of the attack, but not the whole enchilada of damage there, what it takes to get to that point. Um, oh man, it's 
streaming with a sore throat is a little bit harder than I thought it would be. I, I came prepared though. I got I got these guys. Oh yeah, rare candies there, right? Um, but yeah, so the whole enchilada. Well, how do you determine then? You know, you don't have a simulator. You don't have a website. You're just a regular old pogo player. You don't know what's going on. You got this, you know, you got your uh, your Pokemon, you know, it's got bubble. So how do you as a player determine, you know, which attacks got higher DPS? You don't have a website to go off of telling you what's what. You, you got to figure out for yourself. And the best way to figure out yourself is to, you know, take Pokemon with the one attack, take Pokemon with the other attack, uh, try to make sure they're about the same level, and then you have them fight the same thing. And then you're like, okay, so it took this long for this Pokemon to faint that one. It took me this long for this Pokemon to faint that one. So then you're like, well, then that means this attack, you know, it's got to be the better move set, you know. And you want to control for the, the charge moves, you know. So it's like if you're weighing their quick moves, you just want to be tapping. I know, inefficient way to play, but it, you, how else are you going to figure out which quick move is the better quick move without a website, you know. So, uh, so yeah, when Gen 3 drops and you're sitting there in the woods and... And you've got your your you know you got you just caught a blaze of kin and it's got um, I don't know man high jump kick as a quick move and you're like is is this high jump kick blaze of kin better than my counter machamp uh, then you know you gotta do you gotta go find a gym uh, oh yeah yeah you might not want to get a buddy <laughs> that's on the opposing team find a gym attack a Pokemon in the gym. And then have your friend bury it back up. And attack it again with the other Pokemon. And then whichever one did it faster, you're like, that's the stronger attacker, right? Now, alternatively, you could use a website. Whenever those update, you know, people will be posting the numbers, you know, fairly soon on the Silk Road. If you don't know what the Silk Road is, it's a, it's a subreddit. You go on Reddit, Silk Road. Um, I'll, when I make this a video, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. I mean, I like... I assume everybody knows what the Silk Road is, but you'd be surprised, right? Um, so yeah, but you can go on these websites, like, uh, I'm gonna go to share screen. Bum -bum. So yeah, you know, you go to Game Press, right? They're pretty great. Some say I write for them. Uh, they, don't, they don't pay me for this, though, so... Yeah. And if you go down here to Moves... They've got this uh, fast move and charge moves, and all the moves together if you want to. So I click on the fast moves. How soon they'll update this when Gen 3 drops? I don't know, but, you know, so this is the next level. You know, let's say you, you found out what a game press is, you know, uh, and you're not just relying on your, your own sort of pogo math to figure out how good the moves are. Well, they have the base power. It actually tells you the, the energy per hit. And then it, it masks it out, like how much damage per second. And if you sort it by the damage per second, then you'll know which moves are dealing the higher damage. Um, energy does come into play a bit, but I always find that energy is a little bit erroneous. Like, if the DPS is lacking a little bit, but it's got higher energy, then it kind of bounces out. Um, but overall, I'd say, under most circumstances, you know, the higher DPS is going to be the winning ticket. For the good move on the Pokemon with that higher CP number. Now, you're using a website already, you know, so you got that, that next level here. These websites, such as GamePress, uh, the one I write for, um, uh, what? Who said that? Uh, they also got a Pokemon list. And these lovely Pokemon lists have their stats. So then you can also tell, like, rather than just sorting by CP being like, oh god, slacking. <laughs> um, let's ignore those. Uh, so you look at uh, who's a good guy. Um, so you're looking at Metagross, and he's got 200. <laughs> that's pretty big. Oh my god, it's <laughs> Gen three, right? Um, so you've got uh, <laughs> the higher attack stat here. You got this high attack stat, and you got this high CP. You know, um, but Dragonite has lower CP, higher attack stat. How the heck are you going to know that if you don't see the stats for yourself? You know what I mean? So, this suggests that Dragonite is stronger than Metagross. This attack stat business here suggests that all things else, you know, being equal, Salamence be stronger than Dragonite. 
Now, if you're hanging out with me for my Gen 3 predictions video, or if you checked out that 40 minute stream recording on the YouTubes, you know, uh, you'll see that I talk about like how Dragonite might not be replaced by Salmons. We don't know what's going to happen for sure, you know, um, and that's because movesets, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, look at Zapdos and Raikou. Zapdos, 253. Raikou, 241. You know what Raikou has that Zapdos doesn't? Wild Charge. It also has Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's, like, marginally better than Charge Beam, but Wild Charge is, like, crazy stupid better than Thunderbolt. And even though Zapdos has a 10 higher attack stat, remind you of somebody up here, right? Raikou has the better moveset, making it the better attacker right so you know bringing it back cp suggests the power right looking at the moves pokemon similar cp you know and they've got different moves and they're like the same type and you're trying to measure them like who's the better water type attacker you know then you gotta test out yourself in gyms and and see who's doing stuff faster right but if you want to save yourself some some research time on that maybe you want to wait a couple days for the websites to update once some big change happens to the game you know um if you wait out those days then you can go on the websites and see like oh this attack has higher dps this suggests that it's of the good you know and if you want to wait like a month maybe they'll have a tier list out right now, going to the next level of, of swag here for determining what a good attacker is, you can go to my, my good old friendly website, PokeBadler. Uh, with all my attempts to type in PokeBadler.com, the bar always makes me go to raids first. Um, but yeah, so PokeBadler, they have this rankings tab. And under rankings, they got stuff for attackers and they got stuff for defenders. Now, personally, I like the Defenders tab for, like, a general overview, but I feel like the Attacker one doesn't, doesn't do the game so much justice, and it can be misleading at times, you know? Uh, I mean, I could just give you an example right now. We go to Pokebattler, we go to Attacker, and the thing is, is because uh, how it determines what the Attackers are. And with Pokebattler and with Game Press, when you see, like, an Attacker tier list like this, uh, both of these websites... Um, try to do their best to make the model transparent to everyone so we're not pulling like the wool over anyone's eyes here because it's like different factors can influence someone's opinion of what's good you know under what context is it good um, for this attacker rating here uh, it's saying that it's using level 30 attackers battling level 30 defenders and you can change that kind of stuff here but it's telling you what the top 32 attackers were that run through the Monte Carlo um, fighting against the top 30 CP defenders with every possible moveset. So, you know, it's like top 30 CP defenders, unless well, just top 30 CP Pokemon that can be put in a gym, are those necessarily the best defenders? Well, you know, I'm going to be getting into defenders soon, and you'll be finding out that quite often lower CP defenders are actually kind of where it's at. You know, so interesting, right? Um, one way Pokebattler could improve this model is if they used, like, the rankings for their defenders and then compared the top rankings for the defenders against the attackers. That could be, that would be a really interesting way to run it, but it'd be a little bit more accurate in, in I guess, that regard. But is that truly more accurate? It's just a different way of framing the model. I feel it'd be a little bit more useful but these are against the top 30 cp defenders right and uh oh gosh what i have this rated by always pay attention to this thing too if you haven't seen um my video where i talk about how to uh solo any soloable raid boss um power means that these attackers will have like the most hp percentage left over after a uh, after a fight with a gym defender what we want to look at is overall or time to win. I think overall is probably overall a good measure, right? And yeah, so you see like Mewtwo, Dragonite, Machamp, Tyranitar, Raikou, Heracross, you know, so you got these like big attackers, so that would suggest that they're good, right? But in which way are these attackers good? Um, they're good in the regard that they are 
you know, the best against the top 30 CP defenders, you know. Um, now, let's say we got a defender with uh, lower CP, like, I really like Slowbro, you know. So what's good against Slowbro? Well, looking at this, you know, um, Confusion, Focus Blast, Mewtwo, uh, Slowbro resists both those attacks. You know, Machamp resists the fighting type attacks. You know, Heracross resists the fighting type attacks. You know, uh, Lugia resists that extra sensory. Gyarados resists the Hydro Pump. Entei, Moltres, Al you, you get the idea here. So, using the, uh, where are you, my friend? The Pokedex page. Pokedex page could be like a very good measure to find out what's good against a specific Pokemon in a gym defense kind of situation. So you got Arcanine here, and he's your boy, and that's the gym defender that you're trying to figure out who's going to counter it the best. You know, we're looking at level 30 attackers versus level 30 defenders. We got Dodge Special Pro, that means you're doing your darndest to dodge those special attacks. And you got realistic dodging because, you know, we all, we all can't be funky show, right? And, uh, scrolling down, boom, it, so they got this unknown function where it takes the average of all the, all the different movesets, oh gosh, all of them, all the movesets. So on average, take, oh wait, oh no, Slandra. Yeah, that's not good. Important thing to note, right? So right now we're in a situation where uh, Poke Battler is a little bugged right now. Um, they have the right Pokemon, but they got the wrong move sets. And this isn't the first time this has happened. It happens occasionally. Um, and after my stream, I'll message Slandro and be like, "Hey, Poke Battler is messing up again." Um, how embarrassing, right? Uh, usually the move sets are right. uh, Iron Tail Fire Blast against Arcanine. You know, you see that red flags up, something's a little goofy here. Um, but typically, it'll tell you what the best attackers are <laughs> against that specific Pokemon. And uh, for me, when I do, um... oh yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in the gym defense rankings. Um, throwing off my game here, Cilantro. I wasn't expecting this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so that's how you determine good attackers against the gym defenders, you know? Uh, going back to the basic principles, you got, you got the CP, high CP suggests the power, and then you got the different movesets, but we can't tell what the DPS is on our own, so either you test it out under, you know, even circumstances on your own in battle in the game, and try to figure it out for your own that way. Um, or you can wait for a website like GamePress to update, or you can wait for a simulator like Poke Valley to update and not be bugged. <laughs> what? Um, <clears throat> right? Come on, man. And uh, those are other ways to figure out what's good. And I'd like to go into like how to use Poke Valley a little bit more here, but yeah, uh, got to think here. So yeah, so you got the the Pokemon that you're trying to counter, and then uh, and then you can choose the specific move set you want to go up against. But if you leave it as unknown, it's the average of all. So if you're approaching any Arcanine, uh, Tyranitar, uh, I'm going to say presumably with Bite and Stone Edge <laughs> would be the best option here. Um, this wasn't all Looney Tooney right now. You know, Almastar with likely Rock Throw and either Hydro Prump or, uh, or Rock Slide, you know. So it, it'll let you know what's good against those specific Pokemon, right? So then you know how to counter those Pokemon. And this also ties into the raid situation. So we got the raids. Um, I'm in America. We got Suicune right now. So let's say you're trying to figure out what the best counter is to Suicune. Well, when it comes to a raid situation, uh, you're not just worried about who's got the best DPS, who's got the best you know damage in that regard. Uh, it is a factor, but you also want to pay attention to bulk a bit because... Yeah, sure, you know, um, Jolteon's got great DPS, but if it's not going to last very long, then it's going to faint, and then there's time lost from it fainting, there's energy lost from it fainting, you know, so it's like, maybe you want a little bit bulkier of a Pokemon, but then there comes that argument where it's like, well, when are we missing out on the DPS because of the bulk, you know, it's really hard to just, like, tell that on your own, especially when you're fighting in a raid, 
because then you've got other players in the game influencing how much damage is happening to the raid boss, other players, you know, stoking the raid boss's charge moves, and then a lot of performance comes down to how often is the raid boss using the charge moves. So in these situations, uh, you want to look at the Pokemon that have, you know, high base stat totals, uh, that are resisting their attacks, and that are also dealing super effective damage, right? So you're looking at Suicune. Hopefully the raid simulation's alright. Am I right? Pum pum. Right now it's sorted to my Pokebox. Let's go to level 4. Well, level 39.5, right? Uh, if you're unaware, <laughs> Niantic uh, quote-unquote fixed... I, I don't have a screen share. On, I mean, you can't see me right now. I'm doing air quotes. They fixed the power-up situation. So players can now power up to 40. Um, before you could max out at 39. Um, but they didn't fix it fully. No, now you can power up to 39.5. But not 40, right? So new max, 39.5. I got realistic dodging on right now. Maybe a little bit confusing. Let's go with no dodging. Oh dear. No dodging because dodging in raids can be quite difficult sometimes. And I'm gonna go to group sort so you can see more Pokemon. So yeah, so we're looking at here and by certain by the time to win, you know, you're looking at this and you're like, dude, Jolteon looks so swag, you know, but Jolteon wasn't in my counter graphic for Suicune. You know, I had I had this grass boy and I had this grass boy. I didn't even have this grass boy featured as, you know, the Pokemon in the pictures, you know? And the reason why is because even though they do have slightly less time to win, suggesting that they have, you know, slightly less DPS, they've got more power. And the power means that they're dealing more percentage of damage to the raid boss before fainting. So when you're considering, you know, your raid counters, you're going to look at that power a little bit more. Been through this, right? Um, <coughs> in my how to solo and do little party clear videos. And so we're looking at the power. And so we're seeing that, you know, we got these uh, 25.6. Ooh, fancy. You know, 24.8. You know, 23.2. You know what I mean? So we got these good Pokemon. But you're thinking like, well, okay, then Papa Swag. You know, Dragonite. That guy looks way better than Zapdos, Venusaur, Executor. You know what I mean? And dude, Snorlax is looking pretty good here. But then you look at that time to win. And you're like, a thousand? Is that good? Um, it's a thousand's all right. But 13? You know, uh, a lot of Poke Gurus, you know, we've tried to figure out what the best time to win cutoff for Poke Battlers is. And it's mostly agreed that like around uh, 1,200 time to win is like you're getting a little bit too slow there right so while the theory is is that you know you got the bulkier pokemon you're gonna be able to deal more damage over time to the raid boss if the dps just isn't there then you're not going to be getting that damage value so you got raiko which is you know if you look at stats you know much less tanky than snorlax doesn't even resist suicune's attacks just deals super effective damage you know, Raikou's got more value going on because it's dealing, you know, faster damage and it's staying alive long enough where it's getting more value from its damage and stuff like that. Snorlax actually might get some more hits in, but the hits are too weak to stack up to compare quite to Raikou, right? So, fun stuff. Don't mention Rock Throw. Oh, yeah. oh back when I was talking about Omastar, right? Yeah, <laughs> let's not talk about that here, right? And, uh, yeah, also ties into that whole Blissey phenomenon. I mean, a lot of you are already aware that you, you don't use Blissey in raids. Uh, there, there are, like, a few really weird situations where it's okay, but we're not here to talk about that. Uh, but yeah, you see Blissey here. It's got 1724 as it's time to win, and it only has a paltry 17.5 power. So, yeah, your Blissey's staying in there, and it's... Doing its little slap thing, but where is it getting us? Where is it getting us? You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, all these factors kind of converge together when it comes to determining what a premier kind of raid counter is, you know? Um, so, if you go to overall, 
overall is pretty nice for a general overview because it is a combination. And I believe for tier 5 raids, um, I don't know about the other raids because I believe Salandro said the formula is different. But for tier 5 raids, it's an even 50-50 uh, split between power and time. So you're looking at this, and this is usually what I go off of for the most part. Unless somebody's time to win or their power really stands out to me when I make my infographics. Um, is like, who's the best one overall? And, and we're seeing, oh look, we got Raikou, number one, Zapdos, really freaking good. Dragonite, Venusaur, Executor. Which form am I going to put on a graph? These guys got like the same moveset, so I'll merge them together. You know, that kind of thing. And one thing you might have noticed with Raikou... Uh, which is why I put Raikou as my premier Pokemon in that shitpost infographic um, that r slash Pokemon Go doesn't want you to see. So you can only get it on Facebook and Twitter, right? A little squabble with the r slash Pokemon Go mods who I feel take their moderating duties a little bit too seriously sometimes. Um, but yeah, if you look at the power, who's got the most TDO, you know, the total damage throughout the whole fight, Raikou's number one. You know, uh, who's got the better time to win? Oh, dude, it's Raikou again? Oh, what a boss, you know? So it's another way of seeing, like, which Pokemon are best overall for a particular situation. Um, so I guess bring it back a little bit. You know, how much time to win? How slow is too slow? I'd say about 1,200, you know? And uh, as far as, like, what powers are good... As long as they're floating to the top here, it's probably good, <laughs> you know? That part I haven't thought of, because it's really relative to the situation, you know? Um, each raid boss's set of good counters are going to have, you know, different power percentages. But how much time is too much time is uh, going to be a constant, because we're limited by that timer. Uh, the power just suggests, like... Uh, how few of Pokemon you can use to get the clear in. Right, so... Where's the swag? Dialing it back. Boom. So yeah, so... I just want to make sure that that was all clear to you guys, because... I don't know, sometimes there are in these situations where people are asking me for advice on what a good attacker is for a specific situation, and then it's like, I make a lot of assumptions that people, like, understand what I'm talking about, or have some stuff, like, inherently known. Um, so if you want anything clarified on that, uh, please comment in this little chat box here. And I guess when this is on the YouTube, comment below. And if I, you know, miss something, if you want something clarified, I'd be happy to help you out with that. You know, so let's go down to Defenders now. And, uh, so Gym Defenders, right? Who, who, who even tries to defend gyms anymore. I do. Mm.